But hey, worst worst case scenario, at least you have a fuck buddy who you like. I mean, think it could be worse <laughs> from a married woman. <laughs> it's coming the Daily Mail again. We're back once again. With the renegade master. Well, not really, but it's episode 30 of the Couples Quarantine. I'm Jay Haskell. I'm Chloe Maidley. And thank you so much to all of you who've been watching, listening. We're getting about 20,000 listeners per episode at the moment. It's growing. We've had some more headlines, some more scandal. But that's what's important about Couples Quarantine. It's getting my wife and I into shit. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It's not really doing wonders for our reputation, no. I'm not going to lie. I know, people keep going, God, you're so honest, which is an excuse for like... Who says that to you? I don't know, but loads of people go, wow, it's so refreshingly honest, but it's not really up for refreshingly honest, is it? It's like... Standard that my friends think it's just like normal chat. Yeah, but mine, mine are all like that. <laughs> oh my God, not mine, but it's just members of the public. I mean, you come up to me and go, couple's quarantine. It's so refreshingly honest. Um, but we don't want to admit what we're doing secretly. We'll just leave you two idiots to talk about it. So what are we talk about this week? Well, I thought we would start off with a reply from the girl whose boyfriend went from wanting to be exclusive yes. to turning around to her and saying that he actually wanted to have an open relationship for the time mm. being. Now, your response to that was, I just don't think he's really that into you. Yeah. My response to that was, run like hell because he's found someone else he wants to shag. Yes. And it's very disrespectful that he would just essentially change the boundaries of your relationship without even i mean it sounded to me like he was pretty much saying this is how it's going to be mm. where that is really a conversation that has to be had and even then it would be very hurtful yeah um sorry i'm just catching myself just did a whole training video for our sponsors grenade and i'm very sweaty <laughs> you can see the t-shirt grenade sorry not sponsored that. couples quarantine unfortunately because i don't think they want to be associated with them Nobody wants to be associated no. with us, which is why we might not get a series two no so tough tricky series two if you can get there yeah anyway um but anyway we'll have fun while we're here so anyway she's written back in would you like to hear i would love to hear wife of mine no <laughs> husband of mine <laughs> dear chloe and james i've just listened to your reply to my question on this week's couples quarantine and thank you so much i thought i'd update you on the situation since it has dot 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 developed it's very mamma mia D -d -d -d. um i did very seriously think about going and fucking all of his fit teammates <laughs> Just to prove that he wasn't the only lad in the world that I can sleep with. My girlfriends also thought this would be a hilarious idea, Chloe. <laughs> I was being a bit tongue-in-cheek. I didn't really mean go and have sex with all his teammates. I just thought it would be quite well, a funny Well, I'm not sure idea. there was quite that amount of tongue-in-cheek, was it? I think you wanted to put tongue in something else. <laughs> However, we have both just gotten out of long-term disastrous relationships and I didn't want to start that war. You wise, wise girl. So I opted to try and be really mature about it instead and just talk to him. Unsurprisingly, I found out that he would have been fuming if I'd completed my list, which I would have. Always I love it's a list, girls. an extensive list. Goes, which I would have. Always back yourself. Yeah, girls. I will listen. I will have drilled them all. I would have done a job. Yeah, on and everyone. men will have sex with yeah, anyone. It's so, so you okay. should always back yourself. The, uh, Wait, it, it's so much easier for women to get sex than men. True. So much easier. Um, and thankfully. He wasn't sleeping with anybody else, but he just wanted to take things a lot slower and he really enjoys our sex together, which is a bonus. I am, however, still going to be very cautious if anything like this happens again. And I'll do what Chloe suggests and run like hell because it's just not worth it. Thank you so much, though, as your podcast has helped me gain the confidence to just grab the situation by the balls and try to get on the same page with him. Interesting. I'm not sure I'm buying it, but I like I like the yarn he's, he's, he's weaving. weaving. Um, uh, you know, and with, in a nutshell, I'm in a nutshell. Um, I, I don't Same know. Joke, six Same joke. Same joke. Yeah, sorry. Did it on our first You're date. Like, <laughs> fuck. You know, and look, you're still here. So there must be some redeeming effect. I don't know. I, th I love the honesty. I'm glad we could help. Um, I would be cautious, as you said. And if you've got a similar situation, send it to cqquestions at jameshaskell.org. And Chloe and I might be able to shed some light on it. We could make it worse. We're unqualified, but we'll have a good go at it. I think um, it's great. I Obviously, I was being tongue-in-cheek when I said that you should go and have sex with all of his teammates, although that would have been hilarious and way better content for the podcast. <laughs> How dare you, Georgia? Um, but... Um, I'm glad that you actually decided to take the high road and be mature and talk to him about it, which is obviously what I would have done. I 
uh, I think the fact that you said, oh, you know, because it was an idea floated that I should sleep with all your teammates. And he was like outraged and said he'd be really upset. Of course, like, of course, he would have been absolutely upset. And maybe you played a really good hand that made him rethink the situation quite quickly and put the kibosh on the whole suggestion. And I think, say, like, fronting up with that maybe forced his hand. But I would be very cautious because I don't think you just randomly say to someone, like, oh, actually, by the way, it, there has to be a catalyst for that suggestion. So proceed with caution. But it is fair to say that I reckon in the beginning of our relationship, you could have and may have, but we won't go down that road, uh, tried to see what you couldn't couldn't get away with because I think a lot of men do in the beginning of a relationship right and that actually a lot of the time forcing somebody's hand especially a young man into monogamy comes with a sort of okay well I'll do it too and see how you like it and I think it can work so be cautious but hopefully I, I also think yeah it's all fun and games until uh until the woman turns the, t- turns the tables on you and it's like yeah yeah no fine fine you know, I'll just go and sleep with some other people because you're like, it's a lot easier for women. If a woman wants to get revenge, she can walk out the front door and say to one bloke, do you want to have sex? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah okay. 100%. Whereas I go outside the door and I go, do you want to have sex? They go, ah, stop asking me. It's weird. Get away. No, look, there's a lot of I'm women. I'm over 80. Stop pesting me. <laughs> there's a lot of women who... Um who 100% love, like, drop of a hat promiscuous sex. Mm. I told you the story about my ex and the girl who worked in the fish and chip shop. Yes. She literally, so one of my ex-boyfriends... She got a side of battered sausage, didn't she? <laughs> she did. She did. She did. She got a big portion. Um, and he... Oh, I won't complete that joke. Yeah, don't. Um, no, it's don't disgusting. So um, he went into the local fish and chip shop to pick up fish and chips for his family and the girl who worked behind the counter immediately propositioned him and they lived like right next door to the fish and chip shop and he just went went back to her house mm. did a job went back to the chippy picked up his family dinner and went home and i was like i don't know many girls that would do that even if they really wanted to that would actually have the balls to front up and do that and he was like some women do well i don't think there's anything wrong with that as well we, we, we no you know, i don't the, either a woman with the morals of a man is a slut according to yeah uh, absolutely society and it's bollocks no i know i get labeled with that all the time because i'm so open about sex yes. like but no so I so obviously it does happen but you're completely right it's really rare like even if I really wanted to shag a guy that I just met if I was single mm. I would not have the balls to go up to him and be like hey do you have a spare half hour shoy <laughs> I just wouldn't but men would do it like that yeah but that's, I think that's how we're wired don't we yeah and also you just got this the lad culture but I know that you that we people watching this uh, or listening to this and, and men who, who just go I just don't think like that the reason I flagged it up to that to that girl is the fact that what he said it just doesn't sound like a sentence that a man would say it sounds like it sounds like he panicked it sounds like he panicked and pulled out the and he's like what can I say and it's like but no I was just scared of the relationship and it it wasn't you it was me and I was nervous but I really like you just because you realized that she had the power of grey skull and could have done whatever she wanted okay but let's say hypothetically in the beginning of our relationship Mm -hmm. if i'd have said if you'd have said to me like oh maybe we should wait till we're exclusive and i've said okay well i'm gonna go have sex with who's one of your old teammates i don't know well let's not mention specific names fine let's not go there because no i know but it's good to like give like anyway so then so i'd said okay i'm gonna go that maybe would have forced you into being monogamous. Yeah, probably. No. Yeah, yeah 100%. Or would you have been like, oh, good, I've got permission No, now. I would have been like, oh, dear. I fucked up. Yeah, I massively, I've made a big mistake. Right, so that's what I mean, maybe it worked. Well, maybe it did work. Maybe it was a sharpening tool. Fair play to her. You know, good luck with it. I know. Shall I read this one? Okay. Okay. <laughs> dear Chloe and Hask, very familiar, James or Mr. Haskell. Too. James hates being called Hask. No, I love so Hask. I love knows. Hask. I don't, I don't like Haskell. I like Hask. I don't like Haskell. <laughs> right. It took me years at boarding school. Hask, go! It's like, ugh, there's no easy way of saying it. I'm always in trouble. I feel like when people stop you in the street and say Hask, you get that flash of rage. Oh, no, it's only because people come up to go Hask, and I'm like, do I, do I know you? And they're like, no. Yeah. I'm like, well, why, why don't you fuck it? Why, you know, how, how, it's confusing. My friends call me Hask. So you don't like it? I, I, I like it for people who know me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Love the podcast. Brightens up my Monday, so fingers crossed for a second series. Tricky second series. Need a sponsor. I've got myself into a situation which I'm sure many have been in before. I've been seeing a professional rugby player on and off for a year. <laughs> Or, uh, or so, however, as he travels a lot for game and training, less so recently, the majority of our communication is over the phone, with limited chat on life, and us uh, and us as people, and the majority of the communication is sexting. 
We are not exclusive and have very strong suspicions he has multiple girls he can call on for some late night entertainment. Do you think I should cut ties or stick it out and see if he wants to progress to a relationship later down the line? He isn't exactly young and is out of his 20s, sh- out of his 20s shagging phase. However, I know for a fact girls st- uh, still want to hand it to him on a plate because of who he is, so I see why he wouldn't want to commit when the pool is so large. Hask, I'm sure you know someone who has been on the other side of this. Would you sack him off? <laughs> Um, that is a really interesting scenario, and <laughs> be what? honest. I am being honest. I was a very you didn't let me finish. It was a very interesting scenario. Uh, one I have been in myself, and one I have seen other people in. Um, I mean, listen, it's not a great at the start of every relationship or early phase and everything else like that. If you're casual, yeah, the conversations to sense the sex. I know that men can have a one track mind, and women want to develop other other aspects of the relationship it's not great that it's always resorted to sexting i would be very careful um look in my view of these things are is that i know pretty early on or knew pretty early on whether this was going to be a relationship or whether it was not and being completely truthful i would often still have sex with people that i wasn't interested in Mm. Purely because I say this, probably because I could, because the sex was good or whatever. Um, uh, but the rest of it might not have been there. So it's very difficult to tell what phase you're in. I mean, you know, you could just be in that entry level thing where he likes you, you have a bit of fun, you're a bit fruity, he likes having sex with you, but he doesn't want to doesn't want to commit to you. I think at some point you're going to have to hit him with that, with the risk that he might turn around and say absolutely not. Um, uh, but the point is that you're currently in limbo. I think being in limbo for a short period of time in a relationship, you know, being in a period where you're having just fun is absolutely fine. And I know lots of girls have sometimes tried to rush that because they're not necessarily that comfortable with it. And as Chloe said, the promiscuous sex part isn't necessarily part of your makeup. However, there is no point being in limbo after a certain amount of time. If he's older, you know, maybe maybe he doesn't want to settle down at this stage. Maybe maybe you know he is seeing lots of girls. I think you've got to confront him at some point, uh, but give him the benefit of the doubt. And if, you know, if he's having his cake and eating it, and he and he's, and he's got multiple partners, then I don't know. You know, and I I would have known early on if I wanted to date you. And if if he hasn't tried to lock you down or or take it to the next level, perhaps perhaps he doesn't want to. Yeah, look, I would say she says it's been the best part of a year, right, or over a year. I didn't, yeah. What, what yeah, you... sure, okay, it's over there. Right. Men, obviously, uh, there's a lot of men, and you say he, if he's if he's a professional rugby player, you say he's out of his 20s shagging phase, but that likely means if he's still a professional rugby player, he's in his early 30s, mid-30s tops, right? Yeah. Right, so he's still young. Men in their teens, 20s, 30s, sometimes older, do just really like to shag around um, by and large. Obviously not everyone. I don't want to be sexist and I don't want to like presume. But generally speaking, that kind of tends to be true. I do have three older brothers. The majority of my friendship group are men. (laughs) It does tend to be true. If he has known you for a year, a little over a year, even just like six months, and you guys have been shagging on and off and sexting, and he nobody has made any advances for it to become more than that, then either the time is now for you to do that, to test the water out in that context, or the time is now for you to kind of accept that it's not, it, that's not gonna happen and walk. Now, obviously I would say, if I were you, ask him, confront him and say, you know, look, I really like having sex with you and I really enjoy talking to you in this kind of way, but I need to know um, if there's anything more that, that might develop here or not. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe it will get his wheels turning and maybe he'll think about the scenario and what it would be like to be with you and maybe you'll get you'll get what you want maybe he'll turn around and say to you oh i'm just i'm not looking for that i'm just out to have a bit of fun and i don't think that's a reflection on you at all if he does say that it's a reflection on him and where he is i mean before i met james james was like dating so you had two serious girlfriends before you were with me yeah and you had been single for years right <laughs> no 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 i yeah, mean like yeah, you hadn't yeah, had a yeah, serious yeah, girlfriend yeah, yeah, yeah. but what he had had was girls multiple girls that he was and this is completely fair because you were always very upfront with them weren't you very upfront yeah and, well i think you were i was 100 percent. he had 100% multiple girls that he dated said that really quickly slept with nine no i 100 was dated slept with and sometimes like even now we james and i've been together six years he'll like say a girl's name in a story like oh my ex 
and I, I'm like, who is that? Like, I don't even know who that is. And he's like, no, 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 sorry, not my ex, like, not real ex, but it's like someone I was like dating and sleeping with. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And and there's a lot of them. <laughs> and when I say to him every time, why, if you, how long were you sleeping with her for? And he's like, a year or whatever. I'm like, why didn't you like actually try and have a relationship? And he will say just like he just did, this wasn't there, that wasn't there. I didn't like this, I didn't like that. But the sex was great. She was great to go out on a night with. She was great to go on holiday with, whatever. Um, because I, I think as well in, in these situations right how many times have you had a single one night stand and the sex has been any good right or or whatever once. immediate like an immediate Literally like, once. yeah like an immediate <laughs> account it doesn't necessarily work that way so uh, sometimes you know if if it if the if all of it isn't there for the full relationship right but you find comfort you have good sex you 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 enjoy their company it's but a it's, vibe. it's yeah it's it's a vibe but it isn't anything that, that that goes past that. That's fine. And at some point, somebody in that situation has gets gets itchy feet or get yeah. or has to walk and put it on the table. But that could more often than not happen. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if you know, as long as you've been upfront, and honest, you know, the worst situation you can have is that one person thinks they're in a relationship with you. Yeah. And then suddenly they get a shock and you're like, well, hold on a minute. No, 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 I didn't realise we were serious. I was always very up, up, up front and honest. And you, you would lose people on the wayside. But sometimes it suited people. Like girls, you know, for all the pretense, have needs exactly the same way. Yeah, you know, they yeah, want to yeah. find, you know, going and dating someone is quite intimidating. There's a, there's a trust issue. If you know what you're going to get, you both enjoy what you're going to ha- what you're having. There isn't really the pressure of having a relationship. Both of you, maybe it just isn't there in terms of... You know, I mean, I, I, look. I, the reason I married you is you're, you're beautiful. You know, uh, mm. you have a re- <laughs> kind of look like an egg. <laughs> yeah, fit egg. I'm into eggs. I eat every, eggs every day, right? And I love Easter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and you know, you're driven. You're talented. You're successful. Contrary to what the Daily Mail thinks, you know, you, you have your own career. You, you're, you know, you're unbelievably talented. My life's better with you than without you. I've said it many times. This, but to capture that in all in one, I'm not a settler. Mm. I would never do that. But, you know, there could be someone who was halfway to you that I enjoyed having sex with, but it just wasn't the final spark. So I think you need to address that. But it has yeah. been going on for quite a while, as you as you say. But don't okay. don't be disheartened if it doesn't work out, because it, if it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. OK, yeah, let's wrap it up. Look, I, I think I think if, it, if it's making you wonder enough to write into us, dickhead with no qualifications <laughs> no. then um i think it, i think that's a very good indication that you have to ask the question and like i say his his cogs will get turning and you'll either get you know a romantic answer that we all you know really i'm rooting for you so do write back and let us know or you'll get a shit answer but hey worst worst case scenario at least you have a fuck buddy who you like i mean i think it could be worse <laughs> from a married woman <clears throat> It's coming in the Daily Mail again. Okay, right. This is from a man. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you giggling? Because there's so much about this I don't understand that I'm going to have to ask Be you Be careful as well with oversharing on this in my part. I'll I do won't. Ta- over- I'll do the talking. I, okay. Okay. I'll do the talking. <laughs> <laughs> get on with it. Or do you want me okay. to read it? No, I'll read it. Oh, all right. Hi, guys. I love the podcast and I think the advice you both give is spot on. <laughs> My wife and I have a very similar dynamic to you two. We've been together nearly 21 years and I'm only 42. Wow. Wow, that is impressive. Well done, sir. I've always been really open and we've communicated with each other always about sex. I have the highest sex drive of us and I've never found it a problem to take care of myself when she's not in the mood. Professional. We are also very open with our friendship cycle about our sex life. I'm definitely seen as a pervert that she has to put up with. But on the plus side, our friends... I don't know what he's insinuating. He said we're similar dynamics. Is that what he's trying to intimate? I am a no, pervert. No, I look like the pervert. Yeah, good, you are. Well, I'm the one who wants to burn my knob while you're making prawn pill pill. <laughs> yeah. And you've told him I said with a thousand women where people keep writing comments going, fucking look how ugly he is. He's never done that. I haven't done that. Please, James. You, all you have to do is fucking cough and someone will try and have sex with you where okay. are these people i've been coughing my whole life please can sorry we give this man his moment that's why he keep giving me lem sip and benadryl 
<laughs> Every time I cough, <laughs> get that in your mouth. <laughs> Carry on. Benadryl. Benadryl. Um, on the plus side, our friends have told us that we are the only couple that they can talk and joke openly about sex with, which honestly I find quite weird. Is it's twenty twenty, and I don't know why we're not all much more open about something so natural. Here, here. Well, that's why this podcast is is in the scandal columns because everyone pretends they don't do it. Everyone pretends they don't poo, don't fart, don't have sex, don't don't talk about this, don't like sex. Sorry, Karen. Very British. Very British. Right. Before I get to the story, and we're going to cover the story on another podcast because we were meant to have a guest today, and the story is a topic for that guest. So mm. we're going to leave that, but this... <laughs> James hasn't read this properly yet. <laughs> I'm so excited. Before I get to the story, I thought I'd give you a subject to discuss on the podcast that I don't think you've covered so far. We definitely haven't. I personally don't have any male sex toys, but before lockdown, I was considering getting a flashlight to entertain myself when I'm away in hotels, which is part of my job. Okay, pause here. What is a flashlight? <laughs> I, I, I don't know because I haven't owned one. But you do I, know what is it? I think I know what it is. It's basically a device that sim- stimulates all three of ladies' orifices, de- depending on which one you get. And it's called a fleshlight because it's simulates like... Simulates or stimulates? Simulates and oh. stimulates. So it looks like... it's mo- So some of them are moulded on porn stars, actual bits internally. Oh, uh, you can say words like vagina and mouth. <laughs> fine! It's m- modelled on some porn stars' arsehole on the inside out, same oh, with the fanny and same with the mouth. Oh, you can get but three. You get three different, di- different ones, whatever you want. And it's called a fleshlight because it looks like a to- flashlight, a torch, but it's, it's long, thin, has a vibration device in it, and it's you basically get different sleeves to put in there, and you just wank off with it and use it as a thing. Question. Yeah, I'm not an expert. I'm not a salesman for flashlight. Okay, so flashlight, uh, a play on the word flashlight because yes. it looks like a flashlight, yes. which I'm sure we can all yes. imagine. Yes. That you can get three different sleeves yeah. for. <laughs> and so a lot of porn stars have their own ranges. I'm led to believe. Right. Told. So you get an anus, a yeah. mouth, and yeah. a vagina. How do you know that porn stars have their own ranges if you don't know what this is? Because you started. I researched you it before it. I came, or I came on the podcast. Do you have one? No, I don't have one. I don't. I don't. I swear. I swear. I don't. <laughs> okay, fine. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Do you have Fuck one? Off. Chloe, you fucking know you've been through all my stuff at all times. Where am I going to hide it? Up the chimney. In the car, no. just going for a drive. <laughs> Come <laughs> home tomorrow, yeah. and I'll be covered in soot. <laughs> what are we doing? I'll be like nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, exactly. Going through the bins in the wood pile. Um, it's buried can in the I just garden. Ask a question. You're not seeing a big squirrel like bloke. Do you get the hide the flesh like she's coming home? Um, it's a question. Yes. Yeah. If I'm not an expert, yeah. If okay, I'm yes. just going to say something yes. really controversial, but it's yeah. a genuine question. Yeah. If you wanted to have like great anal, for example, yes. Why would you want a fleshlight modelled on a porn star's anus who, let's be honest, while in human form, it might be great with anal? In terms of, like, a simulation of an anus, surely a porn star's anus would be less no, enjoyable no, than, say, no, you know, no, a, it a doesn't nun's work. anus. No, you've run away with this at 100 miles an hour. In, in, you know, No, it's not how it works. You're not going to make a big baggy arsehole one <laughs> that you put your knob in and go, fucking hell, it doesn't touch the sides. What am I doing here? It will be tight you know but i think just because porn stars get you know not every porn star's been ridden to the end of and needs a whole re retread up the bum no look the mouth totally yeah the anus the same the anus and, yeah. the, and the vagina yeah. i'm like Meh. no it's not like that they'll be tighter they're not gonna make they're not gonna model it on a porn star and go what are we gonna do with this it's not like a fleshlight more like a cannon more like a spotlight no it will be tighter okay wait let's move on with this now yeah <clears throat> right, a flashlight to entertain myself when I'm away in hotels as part of my job. I don't need it at the moment because I'm working from home. The question is, sex toys, why is it so taboo for men to use them, such as flashlights or a prostate massage, considering where our G-spot is, fair point, when it's seen as normal and even sexy for a woman to own a dildo and or a vibrator? What a... Uh, Hugely uncomfortable, fantastic question. I know, brilliant topic. question. Okay, James, so <laughs> let's start with you. Right. Talk, well, I think there is a bit to. Talk to me. What? Do you have any male sex toys? I do not have any male sex toys. Why? Um, because I don't. I have tried them. 
Um, and to be honest with you, I'm very envious of women. I think men get, I know women have to give ch childbirth. So, it, you know, it, whoever made us, and I, you know, I don't believe in God, but, you know, whoever we, we came about through natural selection, everything else like that, kind of all the pain of childbirth, but the ability to have multiple orgasms. Men, no childbirth, but you get to have one orgasm, one orgasm once. I know there's those tantric blokes who can get to the point of climax and don't do it. And we should probably get, an, yeah, we should probably get an expert on who can do that. And they, I saw some guy, Brian Rose from London Real, talking to a guy about how you keep it, rub it and squeeze it and do it. <laughs> Sounds like a, some sort of pet or plant. Balloon animal. Balloon, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but basically it's um so they have that they have that ability i think it is, it is a bit odd men who sort of have um a bit of the raw end of the stick really because you know they don't really get to have the toys you know you know without a man women's you know uh, or women rampant rabbit dildos toys they get all that thing what men sort of don't have anything uh, i've tried a few of them and i just don't think they're that great i've never try tried a flashlight okay, yes, and also there's a massive taboo about things like prostate massages because men are so fucking dumb and the average man is very stupid <laughs> and, and and just they panic you're like don't get in my bum oh i'm not gay i'm not gay there's all this like weird emotional attachment to it. If you told me that one of those prostate mas massages would make fireworks come out the end of my piece, I'd be on you that thing it. all the time. I do it. The point I is, I've, ex do, I've so experimented and tried a few things, and they're not—they're not—they're not as advertised. I think women still have the upper hand. Men freak out about that. There's this massive misnomer. There's so much stupidity around. You know, what people forget with with um, sexuality is it is not a it is. This, there are black and white examples, but sex is a a, a mass of grey where you're where you're trying different things to get pleasure and different emotions and everything else. Mm -hmm. And the point is, is that if you derive a lot of pleasure pleasure from playing with your anus, doing whatever, it's nothing to do with sexuality. Mm -hmm. Male sex toys are okay. They are a bit awkward to have around, but it's big, big flesh. I mean, shoulder How big mounted flesh. I don't know. I don't know. Shoulder mounted fleshlight or something. Do know. I you don't know. I remember sitting on the tube and there's a bloke who had one of those um, fake pussy and ass units that you buy from. Um, Amazing. From. Um, sex shops. I had it in a plastic bag, but the plastic bag, when he held it taut, you could see what it was on the tube. And I was like, bro, we can see what you bought. And a bit, I mean, but, you know. A bloke going home can't get a girlfriend knocks that in gets some pleasure out of it i don't see any problem it's all about getting pleasure and fulfillment and if it works it works i just don't think i would always be striving for the, the greatest pleasure i could have and if i you know if you, i just don't think they bring it to that level okay so my, my question was you don't have them why and you're saying you don't think they're that great quality i just don't think they do that much i just don't think for they're you. okay yeah for me i just don't think i mean for example um a uh, a friend of mine a, a dj um jaguar skills is sponsored by tenga t-e-n-g-a they make all the sex sleeves they're from a japanese company they make little sex eggs that no, you they, open up yeah he gave me one, one. Yeah, he gave me yeah, one yeah, yeah. right and? um yeah i mean <sighs> It was a bit of a spicy, you know, self-pleasuring exercise. Got, it got... It's just not, it just doesn't... It, I mean, look, I think if you're horned up, fired up, and you, you know, use one of those things, it's fine. You obviously get different variations like, of those. So what you're essentially saying is you think it's a bit of a surplus requirement kind of thing. I think it is. I mean, I might be wrong. There might be some people out there that have really found it amazing. I think it, for men, it's, it's a massively short supply. I don't think... You know, they talk about these realistic sex dolls and everything else like that, that, you know that potentially could be the future yeah but i i, I mean again you know about 10 grand and <laughs> you know what's your view on it would you be freaked out if you found a load of <laughs> so okay first first of all, anus is in my drawer not the actual ones that <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised i'll tell you that for free um okay so first things first i actually completely agree with you that um to the guy who wrote in um that actually if we have pleasure ple ple pleasure devices yes that are modeled on i'm sure male porn star penises 100 percent they are that vibrate at you know <laughs> a thousand knots a second RPM, and, not and i'm a boat and i'm not gonna lie like f sex toys for women are fucking fantastic and i'm all for them um you're completely right to say that it's not fair that a man owning a sex toy or sex toys plural should be seen as creepy gross and weird which look i'm not gonna lie let's just call a spade a spade it kind of is seen as creepy gross and weird but you're completely right 
that is not fair and and i i agree with you it shouldn't be seen as not fair now when i first met james he did i did remember seeing very early on this yeah. egg thing and i said to him what is that and he was like it's a japanese sex toy for men and i was like well, what is it and he was like it's just basically like something it's a sh- basically it was like you unwrap the egg and it's got a sheath that would extend over your penis yeah and a bit of lube that comes in it and it's for like a travel a travel wank essentially yeah. but then you've got the bigger versions um that you had yeah so i was like i wasn't freaked out by it at all like not at all it didn't freak me out at all if uh, again, now again, I completely agree with the prostate situation. Um, I that, funnily enough, men, we women typically have to be stimulated in other areas of our body to find anal pleasurable. Um, it, well, pleasurable to the point where we climax. So you know, there's there's anal which can be great, and and especially for the man, but also for the woman. But there's anal which will make a woman climax, and that usually involves other things happening simultaneously right whereas what, a small for, dance uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know a show yeah whereas for men um funnily enough uh that is an activity which they can climax from uh, alone and i do find it very interesting and completely agree with what james says that it's ridiculous that so many men are embarrassed to ask for or are ashamed of that kind of activity i completely agree with james again it does not make you gay and it's absolutely part of the human makeup of a man um and and absolutely you guys should all be giving it a go and i agree it's ridiculous that sex toys um should be found upon for men one final point i'll make before we move on to the next question is that i completely disagree there is such a thing as going too far and having a doll that looks like a real human woman or let's be totally honest if you've seen them they look like girls girls with women's bodies that you can lie on top of every night shag spoon and wake up with and have breakfast with that's fucking creepy why would you spoon and why don't you just knock it and put it back in the cupboard i have stories for you on this hold on let me just it's (laughs) yeah john yeah cancel that yeah, yeah. No, it's not allowed. That is um that's fucking creepy and I'm not I'm not in favor of that because that is because that's not replacing pleasuring yourself so you can have an orgasm like with your hand with something else. That's replacing an actual human sexual partner and that's fucking weird and I I'm not on board with okay, it. Okay, okay. And and I really like I'm like if from, in my mind it's as creepy obviously okay fine not as creepy let's not go that far but it is in the same sphere of creepiness as necrophilia and i just can't get on board with <laughs> okay, it okay. i just can't whoa, whoa, no should i tell whoa. you why should i tell you why because this is a non like alive person who is like you are pleasuring yourself with because they look like a woman like it doesn't okay it's okay not relax cool. relax right first of all but that's the, first that's of all it. you you first of all you, you've painted again a a broad brush stroke over this no no, no i'm saying if you had a if you had a if you had a, if you had a sex doll right and your missus wasn't there you got, you got out of the cupboard no, knocked fuck, it in no, creepy, knocked it in creepy. and put it away that's fine creepy. if you talk it's to it like fine. some of these people do it's not fine. all right all right i haven't got one if anymore if i had a man yeah if i had a doll a human silicone doll that cost 10 fucking thousand yeah, pounds yes, yes, with a penis yes. and every night for the rest of my life oh, I, was ri- to me? I was I was riding this dude who wasn't real and then feeling happy as Larry that my life was complete that I basically had a silicone yes, sex but, doll yeah, in my but, bed yeah, but listen, that's fucking this is weird. why people don't like the porn uh, like, like the, the, the men with sex toys is because you associate it with no, those no, weird no, no, men no. in Soho you see with no, anoraks no. the extension of them is they're incapable of getting a woman no, 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 no woman's going to exactly. go near them they smell of right. urine they look weird right. they might not be all there this is that's the best thing they can get and they can get that right. i'm saying there's a happy middle ground no 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 we can just do a little bit of shagging and put it away no 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 absolutely not <laughs> okay this is my final point on it okay. male sex toys all for it let's lift the taboo let's absolutely go for it mm. men try it out ask for it whatever you want great silicone dolls that look like human women fuck that shit no all right but um, evidently you have one no, locked in a cupboard somewhere. No, no, I don't. They're not in the cupboard anymore. <laughs> um, no, I, have I'm Have you had one of these sex dolls? What, a 10 grand sex doll? Well, have you had like a knockoff two grand <laughs> version? <laughs> no, because because then you're only in the only fools and horses territory with Lusty Linda and Erotic Castell. Those blow up ones with <laughs> the mouth. Like yeah. this. Uh, All right, anything that's like that. Anything that looks like this. <laughs> Right, no, no, I, I, no, I haven't, and uh, I know men get into that, and they're a bit. That's a bit odd. Do you know I'm talking like a virtual, one? you know, Do like you a full. Do you know anyone with one? He's knocked a, a full doll in. No. <laughs> Nicole, Chloe, 
Where am I going to keep a fucking inflatable doll in this house? Not you. Although now, with your answers, I'm starting to think you. <laughs> I do think right, you've leapt. You've leapt ahead, though. I don't. I think. You know, but also remember, there's some very sad, lonely people out there, and. You know, uh, women, women hold the key to sexual pleasure. And if they're not interested in this bloke, then what's this bloke supposed to do? Fine, then they can be <laughs> prescribed them on the NHS. But they should not be <laughs> given. Why, why though? They should I think not... it's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, You're a sad, know. lonely man who smells of urine. You have, a, have one of these virtual dolls. <laughs> now James is going go to yeah. go to his local doctor's office Wait. after weeing all over himself. Hello. And so... <laughs> I'm Mr. Snub. Can I have a sex doll, please? <laughs> Mr. Haskell, we know it's you again. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, sorry. I don't know why I'm doing the voice again. Uh, right, carry on. God. God, and you would have a sex dungeon so I better like just change my, my Christmas list get rid of the rampant rabbit 3000 lady man boy thing <laughs> <laughs> okay. we're going to have to cut so much out no, of no we're not we're not cutting anything out uh, by the way again thank you so much to all those people who do write in we obviously keep your names completely anonymous we will answer anything within reason um, there was somebody actually who sent a letter in last week that said about the um, going to the bathroom which was episode 2 that if you um you know, a little trick they recommended. I, I haven't tried it, don't need it, where if you spray aftershave or perfume into the bathroom toilet before you uh, evacuate your bowels uh, and then flush it, all you'll smell is the aftershave or perfume. Somebody said you'll thank me later. So try that tip if you've got um, irritable bowel syndrome or you're on a, on a first date and sharing a small hotel room. They're actually just, um, they've just done the first um, uh, poo transplant because for for gut for gut microbiome yeah but you know people were doing that anyway yeah, yeah. but but like badly doing yeah. it badly it was yeah. like causing all sorts of yeah, health of issues yeah, and it was yeah, like they, a really yeah. really bad yeah, yeah. hippy yippy gippy shitty yeah. idea okay let's move on <laughs> Hi, Chloe and James. I love the podcast and both of your socials. My partner and I have both read What a Flanker and loved it. Thank you. A small biography that's out now, by the way, and an audiobook and hardback. Please pick it up. And I'm hoping that one day soon I will find the confidence and motivation to actually click buy on the EC method. That's my um, online coaching. Rather than hovering around it and bailing out for fear, I won't stick to it. You will. You should join it. We've got a big group of amazing people. 800 people on this round, isn't it? Yeah. Carving up. Oh, we're about to do... So well, basically what you're saying is you can't afford a um, sex doll for me. Uh, no, I can't. Okay. You have a lot more money than I have. And given that we don't share an Not account... Not anymore. I've lost 10 grand down a deal that just went horribly wrong. <laughs> can't talk about it. Right, Karen? Uh, given that... Um, yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah. No. I would really like some advice on my current situation as I've been over and over this for weeks and I'm driving myself insane. My partner is 19 years older than me. I'm 31 and he's 50. And we've been together on and off for three years. We split up for what I thought was the final time earlier this year. As after a lot of back and forth, he concluded that he didn't want to have any more children, whereas I definitely do. Since then, he has completely changed his mind and we've sort of fallen back into a relationship with him being super keen for me to move back in and start trying for a baby immediately. Whilst in a way this is perfect and it's theoretically everything I've ever wanted, a supportive partner, having a family, he adores me, he's not going to hit me or cheat on me, I'm having a bit of a mental struggle over whether this is the right thing to do. Pretty much all of my friends have said that whilst they do like him, they do not think he is right for me and they've seen me uh, or think I could be happier. We really don't have that much in common in terms of hobbies and we completely differ on many political and social viewpoints. And this is the main thing, I guess. Although I do love him, I am not in love with him anymore. I don't think I have been for the last two years and I don't feel that I will ever it will ever come back. For me, we are two friends that are very comfortable together, really care about each other, do nice things and have sex. I've recently found myself almost embarrassed to tell people that we're back together again and I don't want to make it public. Some of my friends still don't know. So my question really is, am I being an idiot by being in a relationship that is nice but doesn't tick all of my boxes or excite me? Or is it insane to give up something that can be so lovely in the hope that I'll meet someone else who cares about me as much, wants the same things and who I find super hot, attractive and have a laugh with? While I know that 30 isn't old, I do worry that I may never meet someone that is perfect and therefore I may not get the chance to have a family that I've always wanted like this again. Any thoughts on this would be greatly appreciated. I don't want to hurt him and I don't want to regret the decision either. Thank you. Look, it is never our place on this podcast to, you know, we give 
advice, some tongue in cheek, some serious, both meant from a good place. I would never advocate ending someone's relationship because it's not my place to do that. Yeah. What I will say is on this, and I will give you my advice, but you don't have to necessarily take it, I'm not recommending it, is you know the answer yourself. You've answered your own your own question within that email. It's it's not right. And if, if this current situation with COVID and the whole reason we started Couples Quarantine is that life is very precious, things change at the drop of a hat. To be unhappy and to be miserable um, and not to have the most fulfilled relationship with life you can have is a recipe for disaster. And you, you, can, you, you can muddle through for a bit, but you're talking about having a baby and committing for a long time. These are difficult things. And from what I'm led to believe, and I talk to my friends about it, anybody who has a child for example to fix a relationship or throws a child into the mix if your relationship is not good it's already it will become 10 times harder and will expose everything so uh, look i i think you know in your heart hearts that this isn't right and that you know you you want passion you want fire you want you want a positive relationship together and while you've got friends uh, while you're friends it's it's difficult you don't want to ever hurt someone and the fear of the unknown and the fear of moving on will you ever find someone the fact is there are was it eight billion people in the world you know half of them are are, are men half of them are women roughly there are plenty of other people out there and it's the fear of the unknown and the fear of leaving the comfort but the point is is you want more and you cannot be in a relationship with someone that you don't love them you know because the point is is that in a lot of relationships the the passion dies but the love and the comfort and them, and them making your life better with them and without them is, is, is the fundamentals. And I think while you obviously have a good time, you want more in the short term. And there's a big age gap and I I just don't think it's going to necessarily work. But I think you already know that and you're maybe looking for us for the green light to go and do it. And I, I don't want to end it because it's not my relationship. I don't want to hurt anyone, but I think you know what's best. Uh, I, I wholehearted, wholeheartedly second everything James has just said. You know, it is like when, when I said with the first girl, like go shag all of his teammates and felt a bit bad when I watched it back, although I still think it was a lol's answer. <laughs> um, it's not, you know, it's not our place to tell somebody whether or not they should be in a relationship. Uh, however, just reflecting what you've said, I don't think age has got anything to do with it, babe, if I'm honest. I think that... Um, the fact that you say like you thought it was over for the final time that kind of shows um what's your closure that you had a feeling of closure um which you don't really get when you're madly in love with somebody and it ends um and the fact that now you're kind of embarrassed to tell people that you're back together again i don't think that's reflective of what other people think despite what you say your friends say i think it's reflective of the fact that you kind of came to terms with it being over and now i think you probably feel like you've let yourself down in a way to make somebody else happy um i understand that you know there's it, exactly what james says it reads to me like you're with you're considering being back with him because of the fear of the unknown of what's next so just to be utterly clear with you here while it is completely true that a lot of men do both hit and cheat on their girlfriends and um wives it is absolutely not the by and large norm um so it's ridiculous that a fear of yourself falling into that kind of relationship is going to keep you in a relationship with somebody who you do not love. Um, and the next thing that I would say is that, you know, I'm not a really big fan of like really taking on what your friends and family say about a partner because... Mm, you know who cares yeah because you're going out with me <laughs> my friends and family love you really? yeah but if they didn't that's what i'm saying if they didn't i mean it'll be com comforting i am quite lovable it would be comforting if we broke up but it certainly would not be a catalyst to yeah, break fine, up i get you, I get you, you. I mean? you're a strong character well i think it's just stupid to be honest um but but the fact that they say that they've seen you happier is maybe an indication that maybe you can are happier without him um and have been happier without him um you know, not a problem, again, that you don't have much in common. That's fairly normal. Um, however, definitely the fact that you do not think you've been in love with him for the last two years is, to me, to me, not you, and I don't want to project this onto you, but to me, that would be a non-negotiable. If you are not madly in love with this man, you cannot settle down and have a family with him. Because while it might be practical, what's going to happen if you meet someone that you fall madly in love with in five years' time and you've got a kid? That's going to be a really fucked up situation, much worse than now. 
you're only 30 you've got 10 years before you need to start panicking about having a baby you know and freeze your eggs i'm gonna have to do it at some point if this one doesn't work <laughs> doesn't put a bun well, in I've, my oven. Well, I've been using that flashlight in the sex yeah, exactly. and wasting it all. That's the problem. Every time I go and have sex with you, because <laughs> There's nothing left. dust comes out. Yeah. I'm like, where's it all? You're like, where's it all gone? I'm like, looking for it. <laughs> like the balloon There's a doll animal. dripping it out of a fake anus, yeah. her baggy porn Ew, star anus in the cupboard. Uh, stop, too far. Um, so, look, yes, look, we can't tell you what to do, but I think you have answered your own question. And, and just la- on the very last point, where you talk about all the things that you think you're kind of overreaching to hope for in another person, of course, it's unlikely that you're going to find someone who you laugh with you have fun with you have everything in common with who loves all your friends and family who they all love you constantly have sex with he's the fittest thing in the world he looks like brad pitt you'll never argue he'll never cheat on you he'll never hit you he'll never no like this is very unlikely but a lot of the time when you fall in love with somebody the flaws or the things that you don't have in common they don't matter because you're in love with them and that's the whole point um so look i think you need to really think about this and if just generally speaking, as a general rule, if you don't think that this guy is the one, and to be honest, you don't think you're in love with him, I don't think that you should have a family. Can I? Can I also just go a little bit deeper quickly? It's it's interesting. You made you've made three points in that in that piece about uh, that screams a lack of of confidence and mental strength. In that, first of all, you talked about hovering around, you know, signing up to to you know undertake a transformation for your body. You've talked about the fear of of, of losing something, and you've also asked us to tell you what you already know and for me a lot of times when people seek motivation motivation is such a transitory thought process because some days you feel really motivated other days you don't Mm -hmm. motivation lasts and you do a good session but to back it up and be consistent you need to have mental Mental fortitude and strength yeah Yeah. and it's a, a unique difference and i think the fact of the matter is you've got to be tougher on yourself and this is a really interesting thing in in the world at the moment where you know i would be described as someone who gives tough tough love where you know you want to be kind of molly coddled you look for others you know i get messages all the time on my social media james will you inspire me i could you have some words of motivation no no i've got nothing to say to you chloe how do you stay motivated every day i'm like i don't stay motivated sometimes i am and sometimes i'm not but that's not no it's that's not the driving foot your motivation is not always going to be there you have to have a backup like what's it called a generator yeah and (laughs) and the thing is you've got to back yourself because if you are comfortable with mediocrity stay with this guy if you are happy with your situation stay with this guy if you don't sign up to transform your body you will keep the same body and what you've got to understand is is that nobody is going to fix this shit for you no no white knight is going to ride over the hill and make you a millionaire sort your rig out sort your love life out you have to do it you have to back yourself and and I know, I think, I, I'm not being harsh, but I'm just telling you. No, you're not. You just, you really need to get that mental strength. Back yourself, see the situation, seize it, and and, and develop your mind, and grab a, 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 a fuck the world strength in your head, because that's what you, that's what you need. I tell you what, like, I'm someone, I'm really tenacious, and I'm definitely a relationship person. I, I usually am in long-term relationships since I was like 16, and I definitely have a fear of breakups and leaving relationships. The three times in my history, romantic history, where I thought that I was not in love with a partner, it killed me, especially the guilt that happens a few months later. That's a fucking joke. It killed me because I knew it, it was comfortable, I did once love them, and again, I didn't I didn't want to feel guilty, but I left because ultimately, being in love is a wonderful experience and of course it might not last forever but it is certainly not something that at the age of 30 you should be denying yourself because some guys finally backed down and said okay let's have a baby like i say whether you like it or not you know you let's just say you have this baby a few years time you might find someone and fall madly in love i know that's what happened to my mum, and then what you know I would just say, you know, trust your instinct, back yourself, and be strong. Um, but whatever you decide to do, <laughs> it's not our choice. Uh, it's so awkward. And listen, and listen, you know, again, I'm not telling you what, you know, either way. I've given you my perspective. I don't know the details. I don't know this bloke. You know, whenever we get these things, this is a one sided thing. That's yeah. so why when you go to therapy and you come out and you and my therapist says you're this and that. Because you've only got one fucking side of the, of, the, of the thing. So I don't know the other details of what you're... Both what, of what's our bobby. therapists think you're a twat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and uh, you know, basically, you've got, you've got that, one-sided, that one-sided approach. But look, 
we've all been heartbroken. We have all emotionally fallen. We have had failures in our careers, failures with our health, mm. failures with everything, and we always get back up. Some people don't, and that is the balance of life, and that is why some people are able to do it, and you just don't want to be that person that is defined by fear and defined by by inaction and defined by, by mental weakness, because um, you could be so much more, and you know, you're know you obviously looking to, to, to do that, and you know the answer, so... And we got quite powerful then, I feel like. A bit like Tim Robbins, but sexier and poorer. I'm not sure about Tim Robbins. Mm -hmm. um, so, hopefully, next week, the guest who we've currently rescheduled, what, two or three times? Yeah. Yeah. We'll come on. <laughs> but we've also He's got loads more on. guests um, coming on. Please, you know, hit us up on our social medias, at Couples Quarantine, um, Couples Quarantine Pod, on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, these these shows are a long format on my YouTube channel uh, under the James Haskell. We also have a couples quarantine one. Please send your questions to cqquestions at jameshaskell.org. Share, subscribe, rate, tell your friends, leave us some feedback. Um, if you're a sponsor, get your checkbook out. And um, yeah, I, I've really enjoyed this show and I will catch you next week. But we've already had two sponsors ask us if, if we could please talk less about sex and the answer is no. No. <laughs> Be seeing you. Bye.